I'm fascinated by the difference in size. That some dinosaurs could be so enormous, but then there are smaller ones that are just as much a dinosaur. Uh, tell us about them. Just as much a dinosaur and just as ferocious. Just and as I, I, I would, in some times, I'd say I'd rather meet up with a T-Rex than a pack of raptors. And, and there's some reasons okay. why. Um, so with the velociraptors, uh, they're pretty small but they tended to hunt in packs and groups, okay. and we'll, we'll see some of the evidence for that as well. But they also would have looked a little bit different from what we're used to thinking. When we think of a T-Rex, you've got this big dinosaur, lizardy skin, and, and things like that. But when it comes to the raptors and some of the other dinosaurs that are similar to them, it's more like a nightmare chicken in terms of the way that they looked <laughs> um, coming at you. Okay. So this image here by uh, paleo artist Michael uh, Shrepnik shows Velociraptor with a lot of feathers. And this has been the sort of thing that has certainly been very hotly debated as to whether or not dinosaurs had feathers or not. The evidence has been mounting now for a good number of years that in fact, some, at least some of the dinosaurs have a good amount of feathers to them. The evidence for this is interesting because Velociraptor has been known to be a dinosaur uh, since they were first discovered in Mongolia in the 1920s. Uh, Roy Chipman Andrews was um, the paleontologist who went out there and he collected some of these bones and in the late 2000s um, some of the American Museum of Natural History workers pulled out some of these older bones from Mongolia and what they found was uh, fascinating. The upper bone here is the ulna. This is uh, your, your forearm bone out on this side of your arm. And when they took a close look at this and scanned it using, a, uh, using a, a 3D CAT scan, what they found is that there were a series of raised dimples, dots, that were fairly evenly spaced along the front end of the ulna. And what they realized is that these are very similar to the same raised bumps that are seen in birds at the place where feathers tend to come in close to the bone. Now, feathers are, do not physically attach to the bone itself. They're integument. They're more like skin in, in terms of where they're placed. But because some feathers are fairly large, and this lower image is from a turkey vulture, which has really big feathers, okay. as the feather comes in towards the ulna, the bone responds by growing larger to act as a place for more muscles to grab onto that feather okay. so that the turkey vulture can make the adjustments in flight. Now, not all birds show these dots, but all animals that have the dots on the ulna Indicated have feathers. Feather. Okay. And so coming, going back to the evidence from uh, Velociraptor, it looked like Velociraptor had feathers. Now, there were some other critters that also uh, had feathers, and Velociraptor was a little bit of a latecomer uh, with respect to that. Um, but this is a picture of a fossil called Microraptor guai. And in Microraptor, it's in the same family as Velociraptor, probably the same biblical created kind as Velociraptor. But this one was only about the size of, um, oh, a turkey maybe, uh, in terms of, of overall size. And what was amazing is, after the first fossils were found, new fossils like this one were found afterwards, and they had feathers on them. All these dark brown... That's feathers. That's feathers. And they look like flight feathers. They don't look like fuzz. They don't look like, uh, you know, frilly sort right. of stuff. These are feathers that are part of flying. And it even had feathers way out on its tail that probably acted as a bit of a rudder or steering device. Now, Microraptor was a weak flyer. In fact, it probably could only glide. But its body was covered from head to toe in this sort of stuff. Uh, and that was one of the ones that when I saw this published in the literature, and, and it, this is actually a very common fossil in China in, uh, in the locations where it's excavated. So there's a lot of evidence for this. This isn't a, a fake or a hoax. No. There's do literally dozens and pr possibly over 100 specimens of these uh, out there right now. So that convinced me that, yes, some of the dinosaurs indeed had feathers. And so a reconstruction of what Microraptor might look like uh, looks like this. And there's even some paleontologists now who've been looking at uh, fossils of feathers, both bird and dinosaur feathers, and finding evidence of some of the pigment cells so that you might actually be able to reconstruct these feathers and actually show, yes, that's where the light and the dark banding was on the feather. Uh, preserved protein material. And we'll get into why that is really important for us creationists uh, in just a bit. So Microraptor's got some feathers. Other animals that aren't in the created kind as the raptors, but are somewhat similar to them, this is an oviraptor. Uh, now, they got their name from the same Mongolian expedition in the 20s because this animal was found near, uh, near a nest, and so it was given the name oviraptor, which means egg thief. 
They thought the eggs belonged to a different dinosaur and that this one was, you know, pillaging stealing them, yeah. and stealing. Well, it turned out that these are probably they are their own nest. And in fact, now we know these, this is a new fossil uh, of uh, an oviraptor. Now, as I said, the velociraptors and some of the other ones are pack hunters. And the reason that we know that is because there are bite marks and claw slash marks on some other uh, plant-eating dinosaurs, one called Tenontosaurus here, illustrated by John Sibick, um, that came from the raptors. But the raptors are pretty small. So a uh, Deinonychus, which is about the right size for the Jurassic Park Velociraptor, is about, you know, about the size of a man, a little bit smaller. They're about 10 feet long. Tenontosaurus is about 24 feet long. Now, if you think of an uh, African elephant, they're not afraid of one lion. No. In fact, an African elephant isn't even afraid of a bunch of lions because they're just so big. If you're a big bull elephant, nobody bothers you. But if you're a juvenile elephant, you're still not afraid of one lion, but you are afraid of a pride. Yes. And the same thing happened with these velociraptors. This Tenontosaurus was taken down by tons of them because there's, you know, this is a little guy. It couldn't be one, it had to be a bunch. So that was part of the evidence that helped us understand that some of these dinosaurs, uh, they're not all just lone, solitary things like lizards out you know, on a rock somewhere. Oh, no. These animals live in communities. They live in herds if they're plant eaters. They live in packs for some of them. There's even evidence that T-Rex was a pack hunter. Oh. In uh, Montana, paleontologist Jack Horner, uh, who really loves plant eating dinosaurs and doesn't like T-Rex very much, and he says that to the news all the time, but He's blessed to live in Montana that has a lot of T-Rex fossils. He keeps finding them. His team found five juvenile T-Rexes in one location. Five. So, so T-Rex... They were running as a pack. At least maybe as young. And this might tell yeah. us something again yeah. about how they live. So, I mean, these animals are diverse. They are wild. And they might be bigger and more diverse and more beautiful uh, than anything we'd ever thought before.